G'day everyone, I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome back. I wasn't gonna stream today, but um, I thought, you know, what harm can there be in just putting the camera on? I need to um, build this large compound two this time. I also made some changes to this kit. I'm not entirely happy with these changes. I'll assemble this. There's a couple of other ways that I can trim some detail off of this. So I thought, what harm is there in putting a stream on, you know? If people aren't doing anything or they just want something to listen to in the background or they want to you know, ask questions or you know whatever, you know, go for it. Otherwise, you know, I can sit here and have a little bit of a ramble and it doesn't feel like I'm here by myself in this freezing cold warehouse today. So like I said, I do hope you're all keeping well. Um, I also wanted to have a little bit of a ramble, a little bit of a chat about these new security cameras. Um, so just like yesterday, I need to sort out all these parts into uh, the proper sequence. So um, I've had a chance to play with the security cameras and I've only got a few of them set up. Obviously there's quite a lot of work involved in getting 16 cameras set up. Um, but so, so far, there's a ridiculous amount of data. If I use those cameras to film in uh, you know, the highest definition they can, you know, 8,192 kilobits in 4K resolution. Um, just from the five cameras I've got set up, this one over here, this one here, that one down there, and the two in the office, there is massive amounts of data. And the interface for grabbing that data is not as easy as I was hoping it was gonna be. I, th I thought I might be able to, you know, just drop everything into, uh, you know, Windows Explorer, browse through to that and there would be all the files. But no, I need to download them from the NVR, from the network recorder. And that takes a lot of time. We're talking about hundreds of gigabytes of data. Uh, and it, I think it's, 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 it's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. So I'm going to have to figure out some way of being able to, you know, facilitate or, you know, manage that immense amount of data because there's a lot of it. There's a lot of it. We're missing a wall. Um, so I'll continue to play with that. Obviously, there it is, um, and see and see how we go because it would be cool to be able to have that data uh, available, just to make it easier to capture, you know, different sorts of things that are happening in the studio without having to specifically, uh, you know, be filming everything. Also, had a bit of a chat with a few people now um, about the makerspace concept about you know, opening up the studio to, uh, oh, I don't have a problem already with this one. How did this happen? <laughs> ben, um, yeah, I've had a chat with a few people already about the makerspace. This tab is in the wrong spot. And it sounds like, you know, there'd be a little bit of interest in uh, having access to my warehouse. So what has everyone been working on? What are you guys working on? Anyone doing anything interesting or exciting? There's so many things happening out there so many games and you know I was at the club last night first time since we've been able to come back after the lockdowns here in Victoria at the Axes and Owls Club and it was a great night I counted 41 people at one stage excuse me we had a cap of 50 people and uh, 
we got close to that, which was great. Which was great. It was so good to see uh, people. And, uh, you know, I didn't play anything. I uh, floated around and took pictures and chatted with people and checked out all the games. Such a diverse range, which is wonderful. You know, there's a lot of clubs that, you know, are or become, you know, 40K clubs or AOS clubs or, you know, historical clubs. But we had a whole range of different sorts of stuff going on. Um, we, you know, bolt action, um, infinity, 40K, ninth age. Um, Jason at the club, um, a treasurer was uh, ran a, a game of full thrust. There were board games, there were role players there. It was great. It was a wonderful, wonderful night. All right, well, so far everything is looking okay. This one will go, no. So I trimmed a little bit off of this kit, which is why we need to, uh, that's very tight. Why is that super, super tight? Well, at least we know it's never gonna fall apart. Shouldn't be that tight though. Four Pillars Gaming says, yo Viv, must have been nice to see some faces again. Makers Space Sounds Epic. It was great. You know, the, the our gaming club, like so many others, um, around the place shut down um, in February last year. We managed to get running again a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I missed the first club night back. There were 65 people at the first club night. Um, I missed that night. Unfortunately, there were other things going on and I couldn't be there. Uh, then I managed to get there the next week, but that was one day before Victoria went back into lockdown. So there was only maybe a dozen people there because everyone was like, no, we just gotta stay at home, you know. So with, <laughs> there wasn't a, 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 big, a big crowd there. I am just going to, so I can finish assembling this model, cut this tab off. If you ever wanna cut MDF, just get a sharp knife and just score it gently, you know, four, five, six times and bam, you know, you're through. Give it a little bit of a file and we're good to go. So it was great to see some people. I took along some uh, uh, terrain and some miniatures to play or introduce people to Tribal, which is a game by Mana Press here in Melbourne. And uh, I, I, there wasn't anybody who didn't have a game or, or wanted to play. So I just floated around and um, just enjoyed being part of you know, the gaming that was going on and seeing people enjoy themselves. And um, it's always what I've really enjoyed is, you know, facilitating the engagement. That was one of the big things that I loved about my retail shop, Battle Bunker, was just being able to provide people a space to play. And I was reminded how important that was uh, a couple of weeks ago when someone came into the studio here, one of uh, my old customers from the, from the Battle Bunker, Mr. Ben M. He came in to pick up some stuff that he'd ordered on the website and said he was going to catch up with, you know, another chap and he said, do I remember him? And I was like, yeah, of course I remember him. And it was, it was not the first time that had happened in the last couple of weeks where someone who used to shop at my old retail store uh, a decade ago or more had formed a friendship at that shop. And a decade later, those friendships are still going strong and those people are still catching up and playing games. Um, I just, you know, that's amazing to me and, you know, I'm really, happy to have been, you know, in some small way, the facilitator of that engagement and of that friendship. Um, well, there we go. There's one small problem we found on the ground floor. Um, so it was, it was great to see people. The Four Pillars Gaming says, do you still play Saga? I learned that game punching your vids. Uh, what were your thoughts on it? I haven't played Saga for a long time. I haven't played second edition Saga at all. Um, that mostly because, you know, I'm an idiot. Now, <laughs> Saga was a great game, uh, and I'm sure it's still a great game. Uh, I, I did that uh, video series many years ago because I loved the game. It was super fun to play. It was fairly easy. You know, there was a whole bunch of nuance and detail in the battle boards that 
whilst the core mechanics of the game were relatively simple, those battle boards and their nuances and the differences between um, the, the different uh, um, nations, um, you know, gave the, the game a whole, you know, sort of detailed feel whilst keeping the core mechanics relatively simple. Now, when I did those videos, th those videos have been extremely popular. I don't think I need that part. Uh, have been extremely popular. And I've had messages from people all over the world saying, you know, my club plays Saga because of your videos and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Thanks for making the videos and all that sort of business. Um, and the guys from Tomahawk Studios reached out to me and said, the videos are great. Thank you so much for doing them. You know, if you ever need anything, you know, let us know. So I was like, wonderful, thanks very much. You know, I've you know, got everything I need. I'm real happy. You know, it's a great game, blah, 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 whatever. Um, and then second edition came out. And this is where I got on my high horse. and thought I was the bee's knees. I sent them a message saying, hey guys, you know, wonderful to see that, uh, you know, second edition is coming out. I'd love to do some videos on it. Would you mind sending me a rule book so I can, you know, have a look at it and, you know, get involved? And I didn't hear anything. And I contacted them several times and I didn't hear anything. And <laughs> then I was like, fuck this. You know, I'm not going to uh, do anything about this. And I haven't played second edition Saga. Because I'm an idiot who got on a high horse who thought, you know, the least these guys could do was send me a real rule book. So no, <laughs> I haven't played second edition Saga because I'm an idiot. It's great to see that there are a whole bunch of different expansions for the game. That piece does not go in there. Where are my pieces? Uh, but there's a bunch of different sorts of ways that you can play the game, including fantasy and all that sort of stuff. Um, this wall goes here. This wall goes here. But I haven't played it. I really should have a look into it. They're, in, they're incredibly expensive here. Solvik says, good afternoon. Cool, more building. Well, you know, I needed to build this uh, uh, large compound too. I made some fairly serious changes to this model. Again, I needed to trim off uh, 12 millimeters of it to fit in with all our other large kits. Um, but this one ended up modifying a bunch more pieces and I'm not entirely sure. I trimmed 12 millimeters off this side. So this walkway here is now 12 millimeters narrower than it used to be, which I'm not happy about. There, you know, once I've assembled it, I think I want to trim the 12 millimeters out. So this is the ground floor here. Trim the 12 millimeters out of this space here and either side of the gate here and then through this walkway. So the buildings on this side still remain the same size. The walkway still remains the same size. This is good enough for a 25 mil figure, um, but you know, maybe 30. I don't know what the space is there now. It's 37 mil. So you'd get a space marine through there on the 32 mil base, but uh, I've got a feeling I might want to take out the space here. I don't know, we'll see, we'll see what happens. So yes, I needed to sit down and build this. So Solvix, this building is already available on the website. There's a link in the video description. This is the large compound two building in the Tabula Rasa range. Uh, I did two of these large compounds, large compound one, which I uh, built yesterday and large compound two, which uh, uh, you know I'm building today again, because I, I made some changes. Um, so this building is already available on the website. It's just that once I've finished here, I'll need to update the photos because there's one wall that I've removed from this kit, this piece here, which is no longer part of this kit. It used to sit up on the edge of this. There's a staircase that comes up here and this wall used to sit above it. So the model is slightly different than it used to be. It's 12 millimeters narrower, um, but for all intents and purposes, it's the same building. But yes, I need to rebuild it just to make sure that everything goes together properly before we cut stock and ship them out. And so far, aside from that tab on the ground floor, everything looks good to me. 
and I'll go in there. And I'll go in there. So yeah, small building. And then, you know, like I said at the beginning of the stream, which you might have missed, you know, I wasn't going to stream this, but you know, I figured I'm sitting here by myself. At least I can have a ramble to somebody rather than just rambling to myself or watching, you know, more Stargate or, you know, whatever. Uh, I can at least put a stream on and um, have a bit of a chat. Why does this not go on properly? Oh, I see. So there's two problems. This tab is in the wrong spot. This is what holds the wrong spot. There's a little tab just here. Uh, this, this little tab here. This is what the floor sits on and clips onto. And uh, all the others are okay. And the one on that side is okay. It's just that this one is has been moved because of my incompetence. <laughs> Four Pillars Gaming. The rule set is awesome. Call me shallow, but I couldn't get over their mini sculpts. Not super great. There's so much option available for historical gaming. Uh, so many companies that make historical miniatures. We're talking about Saga, but back to talking about Saga. The, the rule set is great. Um, but there's so much option for historical gaming that you're really uh, spoiled for choice. There's some really good ones out there. There's some not so good ones out there. But, you know, between, you know, so many different companies, you can have such a diverse, you know, range of miniatures in your collection. I'm not a massive fan of plastic miniatures just because I don't like sitting down and assembling, you know, lots of tiny little parts and stuff. So I, I, I'm a real big fan of single piece metal, but single piece metal sculpts kind of tend towards, you know, a lot of repetition in your armies. And that's where in the historical gaming, area you've got this wonderful diverse group of uh of makers of of, of uh, casters and, and sculptors and stuff producing you know loads of different types of the same type if that makes sense miniatures uh, yeah so I, I i might change this instead of trimming off this 12 mil from here and you know the way that i did it was not great I'll trim out the 12 mil from here and uh, I need to leave the gate the same size because there's an optional add-on that you can buy. Well, actually, I don't know if you can. I don't know if I put it on the website with, you know, working gates for these large models. This gate is a standard size, so I can't change that, but I can trim six mil from there, six mil from here. I don't know. I might replay with this uh, a little bit just so I can increase the space back here, add that 12 mil back to the, uh, the walkway here. Um, otherwise, this model is looking all good. Two issues. Both of them tabs in the wrong spot. Otherwise, everything goes together well. Cornelius says, I'm actually really glad uh, I get to see your process from start to finish. Watching from Brisbane. Hello from Brisbane. Um, I, I, you know, I am very keen to make those videos that I was talking about yesterday in terms of taking uh, you through the design process, um, playing around in SketchUp, and I think I might do it live. I think it'll give us a little bit of interaction. Uh, you know, I don't have a lot of people who watch my live streams, and that's cool. Um, but I think that for those people who do watch, when I'm doing that design process live, you know, you'll get some input. You know, where should we put the windows? Where should we put the doors? What type of roof should we have? How much detail do we need to put on this kit or, you know, whatever we're building? Probably do some uh, some Tudor stuff or, or fish out some of the stuff that I've, you know, already got and maybe try and finish that off or maybe just start stuff from... It's always hard when you've designed something and you come back to it a year later on and you're like, I don't know how this model goes together. I don't know what these parts are. Um, it can be challenging to come back to a model. Sometimes it's just easier to go start from scratch. Uh, so this is this is this is all good. Uh, just a couple of stringers over here. There's a whole bunch of steps over there and some roofs. Oh, we do need to check that roof because I modified the roof. So let's slide this out and get these parts. And we need this here. We need that bit, and that's the roof trim. That's the roof detail. One, two, 
tree that's a piece of scrap. There is a roof part missing. Hmm. Okay. Um, all right, so back to the chat. Paul Pillar says, what's the shipping to the US? Uh, it varies. You know, our website interfaces directly with Australia Post. So nothing down there, nothing down there. Our website interfaces directly with Australia Post. So when you put things into your shopping cart and uh, you can go to the uh, cart, shopping cart, and you can click estimate, it will then have a look at what you've got in your cart, send the weight and dimensions and stuff to Australia Post. Australia Post will send back the quote that it will cost to ship it and show that to you. Um, so I, I don't set it on the website. It's changes as Australia Post updates or changes their rates, um, which happens from time to time. So it just automatically interfaces with Australia Post servers and you know does a push pull request. You know here's the details, how much it's going to cost. They send back the price, and that's the price. Um, so, or if you want to get together with a bunch of friends, or you just want to buy a whole bunch of our stuff, over 400 Australian dollars, which is what 280 US dollars or whatever, shipping is free. Um, missing a piece. How are we missing a piece? Oh, we are not missing any pieces because this goes on here. <laughs> All those pieces are for that roof. So the shipping varies. And that should sit on there. Oh God, yeah, of course it doesn't. Why and how not? Yeah, the roof is wrong. How is the roof wrong? Roof is wrong. Okay. I don't know. How, I don't know how how this happens. Like I said yesterday, this model has been designed in CAD. But you know, I, I when I did the model in SketchUp, I only exported the parts that I modified. But obviously, I've forgotten to export some parts, or I've exported some of the wrong parts, or whatever. Um, so this is three mil, too narrow and tabs wrong spot which tab spot this way this way and these tabs are in the wrong spot so that's three issues we've found with this kit okay cool i will assemble this roof ah oh, you know there will be a problem with this roof Maybe there won't be a problem with this roof. So, um, what's the shipping like? Solvik says, I'm currently trying to decide which to order now. Too much stuff, <laughs> too little time to build. There's a lot of stuff on our website, which is why at the moment I've really slowed down, you know, designing stuff. Um, you know, I was chatting with uh, a while ago now, one of my business mentors, and, you know, we were running through our product catalog and, you know, he said, you know, Viv, you've got way too many products you just need to stop you need to provide some you know higher level of support for those products and you know we were talking about videos and articles for the website and stuff and rather than just trying to increase revenue through brute force you know just more products more products of oh, this genre that genre you know um slow down and build what uh build on what you already have so yeah, there's, there's a lot to choose from on the website. You know, over 420 MDF kits. I think in our, our product list, we've got uh, 718 SKUs. That's across you know, tokens and templates and you know, all that sort of stuff. But there's a, a, a fairly considerable uh, amount of MDF out there. And uh, it would be nice to spend a little bit of time playing with it. Like this, this model here, um, let's just come over here. It's not obviously fully assembled. Um, this model here is one of the desert compounds, uh, the large compound two. Um, it's obviously been designed for modern gaming. You know, it took a lot of inspiration from uh, the compounds and uh, you know the larger buildings that you see in Afghanistan and places like that, um, Afghanistan. Uh, but you know, this same building with a bunch of greeblies and some paneling, some little bits of serial card and stuff on the side. You know, 
little bits of old control circuitry and all that sort of stuff, you could easily turn this into some sort of sci-fi building. And, and that's what these models in the Taboola range are really great for, is just, you know, playing with and modifying to make them your own. The hardest part about getting minis is having them sent to Australia. Th that's true. It's very true. You know, I spoke yesterday about ordering some miniatures from Empress Miniatures in the UK and uh, you know, I put in a big order and it made sense, you know, okay, fine. You know, it was a, a lot of miniatures and for the price that I paid for postage, it, 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 it made sense. It was, it was not too difficult to make that decision. But if you want just a handful of figures, uh, you know, it's the same as, you know, there's a quid pro quo happening, quid pro quo happening here, a to and fro. For us to send just a few things out of Australia is terribly expensive. The more things that you're shipping out, the cheaper per unit it becomes, postage-wise. That if you want to buy a few things from overseas, just a couple of miniatures, there's some wonderful ranges. I'd love to get some stuff from hassle-free, but you know, I only need three or four figures. And you know, by the time you factor in the postage, it becomes uh, a little bit a little bit crazy. He goes on to say, I try to buy female minis mostly now. I've got enough men, yeah. Well, that's you know, there's there's not enough female miniatures out there, is there? And I want more that can represent me better on the table as well. Yeah, good on you. I think some could be bundles and do special orders for separate bits, yeah. I'm on the iPad, so going through a big store is tough. Yeah, well, our, our store, our website is so... so it's bloated is the wrong word. It's just difficult to navigate because, you know, when we started, we split all our ranges into... Um, split all our products into ranges. So we had Century City and, you know, Century City Chinatown, um, and, you know, grew from there, Century City Waterfront, Aftermath, um, you know, the Letters Home, Normandy, and, you know, Pacific. Because we branded each of those ranges, and on the website, you, you, you would go to the website and look for a brand. But we didn't have, you know, World War II terrain. It was Letters Home. And if you didn't know what Letters Home was, how the where you're going to find, you know, the World War II stuff uh, in our, you know, Letters Home range. Um, it's a cool name, and I like I like the concept behind that branding, but um, it's made it very, very difficult to navigate the website. So I did update a few things several months ago to try and break it down a little bit into fantasy gaming, sci-fi gaming, you know, historical gaming, and all that sort of stuff. But it's a beast of a website, and um, still very, very slow. It's an issue for another time. Greg Myers says, first off, love your stuff, man. Thank you so much. But I'm old and grumpy, so why do I have to go online for assembly instructions? I like to tune out the internet when doing models. Just a black and white one sheet insert. Just a black and white one sheet. There's a couple of reasons why we don't include the instructions in our kits. Um, and it's primarily just got to do with the cost of printing. Um, as, as you know, as well as the environmental impact of printing out thousands and thousands of sheets of paper that are gonna get used once and then chucked out. Um, so, you know, if we, if we had to include, you know, the instructions in each of our kits, I don't, it's, it's probably something worth thinking about. It does come up from time to time, not really enough to, you know, panic me. Um, but I, I know that having our instructions online is not the most convenient for some people. But from a, uh, a process perspective, um, it's, it's easier for us, as well as you know, from an environmental Im impact sort of perspective. Um, I, I say that you know we chuck out tons of MDF scrap uh, and uh, you know emit some fairly. fairly <laughs> noxious gases into the atmosphere when we're cutting up our kits so wherever I can reduce our environmental impact you know I'll try to do. Vanilla says I'm glad you have a lot to choose from on the website there's stuff for our D&D group stuff for Fallout tabletop Warhammer 40k and Kill Team. It's one of those things that just never ends you know there's just so many games across so many different genres. It's very hot now with this hat on while I'm talking a lot. It's heating up my brain. <laughs> um, there's so much to do, or so, so many things that could be done. Like someone had mentioned yesterday uh, in, the, in the chat about Wild West. 
love to do some Wild West stuff. But you know, there's at least another dozen kits, another, another dozen barcodes, another dozen SKUs, another dozen spots on the shelves out there. Um, you know, at some point, you know, I've got to decide, you know, I'm probably at that point where I need to move things to just cut on demand. Uh, and then, you know, that's okay. There's three Trotex sitting out there. You know, normally if we need to cut kits, it's a day, maybe two. Um, so it's not really a huge issue having to move things to cut on demand, but you know, space is the issue, and, uh, which kind of seems crazy. You know, I gave my wife a studio tour video this morning for her, she teaches interior design, um, for her class students uh, as a possible project to come and, you know, measure and draw the warehouse for their projects and all that sort of stuff. So I quickly made a video for her and there's just so much crap in the warehouse. It's just unbelievable how quickly space gets gobbled up. Um, so yeah, there's lots of stuff to choose from, which is great, which is great. I'm going to finish up in about five minutes because, uh, you know, been on for half an hour now. I think that's about enough. I don't know, again, how quickly or frequently I'll do this, but um, Solvik says, I love Chinatown. It's one set I really want. Um, I like them. Uh, it's a lovely set. It's a, it's, a, it's a lovely set. And, you know, we had plans to expand all of these ranges. Um, but, you know, being the consummate war gamers where we're like, oh, what's shiny? What's shiny? Coming back to sets that are now five years old is, you know, not the most exciting journey. But, uh, you know, I, I do want to revisit some of those or at least, you know, put together some really interesting bundles on the website for those people who are looking for a specific table rather than just, you know, here's five Chinatown buildings or, you know, here's five, you know, Neo Century buildings or whatever. You know, you can, here's, here's, here's some of this range and some of this range with a few little greeblies and accessories and some fences and walls and some grates and some dumpsters and stuff and, you know, put all of that together and it makes a really cool, interesting table. Um, I would like to do some more of that sort of stuff. So finishing up, Solvik says, I like them online, but I live in an iPad, so it's easier for me to handle. Yeah, the instructions are one of those things where, you know, it might be an option. Maybe I can put it as an option. Actually, that might be an idea. It does mean a little bit of extra processing here. Some changes to some yeah, process. I can put that in here. Do you want a copy of your printed instructions? Something to think about. Something to think about. All right. I'm gonna go make these changes to this kit and then get it uh, underway so we can start shipping things out. Thanks for tuning in everyone. I hope you're all keeping well. I will catch you next time. Now, I should set up a hotkey for this button so I can get out of here real quick, right? But no, get out. Greg, while I'm trying to figure out where the button is for me to get out of here, yeah, all right, Greg, I'll, I'll figure out how I can get the, do you want a printed copy of your instructions on the website internet thing? So that when you are uh, buying our kids, you can say, give me a printed copy. See you later, people.